and that's it. I'm on the Tularosa River, Reserve, New Mexico, looking for narrow-headed garter snakes. It's always sunny here. One good thing about being an unpaid or low-paid intern or technician is the diversity of chores you get because you're trying out all new types of work. Here on the Tularosa River, I was assembling traps to catch snakes and check on the health of the population. When all said and done, we've laid out about 130 of these traps. They spanned about a one mile stretch of river and caught snakes and fish. Sometimes the fish would help catch more snakes. Then we would feed the snakes a small pellet that was a radio frequency tracker and map their behavior. It was arduous checking all those traps. Still gotta check a lot more traps. Do that now. Found a toad. Like true herpetologists, we were interested in the health of all species. My supervisor liked to give me a hard time about learning these species. So he gives a lot of clues here. Let's see if the uh, fan herpetologist can figure this out from the description that he gives. An actual toad or yeah. a tadpole? Toad! Really? Yeah. No, not that. So which one is it? Spadefoot. Where's your booklet? I designed those so you could take them out in the field and drop them in the water. <laughs> I don't want to hear that it's back in your cabin. It's not, not of any use there. <laughs> Spadefoots are in the family Scaphiopodidae. But what you called it right off the bat was right, Bufo, which is a true toad, not a spadefoot. And there were really only two in that booklet. He's got a Bufo over here. Maybe you guys can tell him what it is. Marinus. We're a little far from the tropics. You see the light eye band across the, between the eyes? Cognatus has got the big spots with multiple warts and the stripe down the back. Is that parotid gland that size or larger? It's elongated, longer than it is wide. Correct? You got the eye bar. Correct? <laughs> Getting the lesson down. <laughs> Bufo, micro Uh, Southwestern toad. You gonna eat him now? Do my toad licking impression now. <laughs> this wet sort of looking spot is their pelvic patch where they soak water up through their skin. The swab he's using is to check for diseases. Mm -hmm. Chytrid fungus is rampant and kills a lot of amphibians and some reptiles. Like I said about the transmitter that we put inside the snakes, once they've ingested them and started moving around and we want to know We're where they're nesting movie. and denning, etc. And use this radio tracker to close in on them. The clicking indicates proximity to a subject. Good to go. About as close as I would venture. Here we found a rattlesnake. And that's a, it's an adult snake, but it's not long way from being maximum length. But when I caught, I was working across this slope with another guy, and I caught that Rufy Punctatus, mm -hmm. and then uh, 
like I caught it and then he goes, oh, here's a black tail. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, it was like boom, boom. As I said about getting to work on a diversity of projects, being an intern, technician, the next thing we did was to track hummingbirds. This involved a trap with a sugar serum liquid that they would fly into and then it would be lowered. Sometimes it would take all day. This is the so, super so, advanced mechanism so used you're having for to work on ladders, dropping right? the trap. Just on the eight foot. On the eight foot. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Thank God. <laughs> Just release that clip when they fly under that it's canopy. It's on the eight foot, eight foot high. Um, well, and then go on and using the... Tracking birds involves banding ankles. Very nice. That's the next step after catching them. Show you how we make the bands. We have downtime. We can do this. This is our sizer. Mm -hmm. So we got a strip here because the majority of the birds that we get are broad tail. So set that out. Kind of straighten it out. It's extra large, mm -hmm. medium, mm -hmm. small, extra small. And, and it's amazing how important it is to get your cut, you know, perfectly straight, vertical, and you know, angles. Mm -hmm. Because when you put that band together, if there's any angles, it makes a difference. Yeah, it won't you don't, close well. You don't. See these? See these lines? Okay. Well, to cut from there. That line to that line is an extra large. To cut from that line to halfway to this line is like a medium. So I'm going to cut. So then I just stick it in there. Kind of line it up. Oh, nice. And there it's cut. Okay, so now I have that band cut, then I want to shape it. So I have to track. Not like all of the bands, you know, if we destroy one, then we mark it down right. as destroyed or very gently I push it, crunch it, and there we have a shaped band. Very nice. And we get calliope, black chinned, uh, rufus, broad tail and now mags. Okay. So we get five species. After catching a bird, it's not simply a matter of strapping on a band and letting them go and hoping they return, but taking a lot of data on each individual. Uh, band status will be a one. Okay, it's a new band. And when I tell you the number, uh, repeat it after me to, to make sure. Did you catch another? Yeah, Oh, boy. It's not a mag. No, <laughs> that part we got down. <laughs> okay, this is the worst part. Well, yeah, actually, you know what, too? Yeah, I'm just going to put in. This bag is really difficult. Do everything through the, the bag? Yeah, it's got, yeah, get the bag on there. Getting the tarsus moving, huh? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the tarsus leg is K. Tarsus is D. How was that? G. So she would get uh, an E. Oh, I We don't do wing trade on on um, a mag. Wing trade? R1. And then right there is R1. It's green. Okay, and then tail mid. R3 if I There's a mag. So we're looking for the R3 area. Eight wide. Five. And five long. It was my first day out, so I didn't know a lot of the technical jargon, so I couldn't explain it to you, but I know when they were sexing a bird. Did you put Zero on breed. Hmm? This is the this is the male. Mm -hmm. This is the female. This is the male. Okay, this is what it is. 
That's your mail. Even the pros got a little confused, and the birds got a little dazed after it was all said and done. H13377. If those numbers don't confuse you, I don't know what will. <laughs> Tell me what it is on the... Let me get, let me get a band on it. Are you at 3367 or more than that on the grooves? And then we simulate flight to, to wake them up. Like that? Yeah. There you go. Sometimes Jay. it takes a... So far, all the birds that we've ever caught that have been banded are ones that we've banded. Oh, so it'll be a red-lettered day when we get one that somebody else banded. Mm -hmm.